mention the word epidemic, you'll most likely think of infectious disease, the darkness of the Black Death, the expanse of Ebola. Except, I didn't show you a map of the flu. That wasn't the Black Plague either. Let's take another look at that map. This is a map of obesity. Obesity is the silent epidemic that no one is talking about. No, it's not infectious, but it's spreading as dangerously and as quickly as the Black Death and as the flu. It is true that developed countries have higher rates of obesity than developing ones, but the myth that obesity is a rich man's disease is just not true. It is also true that a lot of obesity has to do with the Western world's diet. But the myth that obesity is just a Western world's disease is also not true. Where do you think obesity has spread the fastest in the last 35 years? America with its hamburgers and ribs. The UK with its shepherd's pie. No, in fact it spread fastest in countries in Asia, Latin America, and Africa. In the lead is Mali, where obesity rates have increased 15.5 times the level in 1980. Wait, 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 hold up! What even is obesity? Obesity is defined if your BMI is above 30. A person's BMI is calculated by dividing your weight over height squared. On the left, we have John. He weighs 82 kilograms and is 183. His BMI comes to 24.5, which is in the healthy range for Caucasian males. On the right, we have Fran. She weighs 56 kilograms and is 165. Her BMI comes to 20.6, which is also in the healthy range for Asian females. Click on the link to calculate your BMI. So why care about solving obesity at all? It's so complex, it takes so much time to deal with, it's, it's unsolvable. But whether or not you think obesity affects you or not, it's been neglected as a world problem for far too long. There are three major reasons why you should care. Number one, our own personal health. Number two, the health of our society. And number three, how much money it takes just to solve obesity as a health problem. The obvious reason to care about obesity is your health. You've probably heard it before. Obesity can lead to terrible outcomes in your body. But did you know that obesity can cause cancer? Ah, got you there. It's surprising how easy it is to grab someone's attention by just saying the word cancer. Anyways, according to the CDC, obesity can lead to an increased risk of many diseases, such as liver cancer and colon cancer. But it can also lead to poor quality of sleep, breathing problems, mental illness, and body pain. According to the WHO, heart disease, stroke, and diabetes are the number one, two, and seven of the global causes of death. If we look back at the diseases associated with obesity, it's clear that obesity is the root cause of these problems and many more. If you're not concerned about your own personal health, then at least we shouldn't be imposing the burden of obesity onto our children. Childhood obesity has spread at an exponential rate. It's estimated that 10% of children are overweight, 3% are obese. We are normalizing the obesogenic environment both physically and behaviorally. We're normalizing the consumption of fatty, unhealthy diets, and this behavior has spread to school cafeterias around the world. Sweet Greens, a fast casual salad chain in the US, researched about how lunch is served in cafeterias around the world. American lunches tend to serve fried chicken, mashed potatoes, and chocolate chip cookies with minimal servings of vegetables and fruits. But when you look at other countries like Brazil with their pork and mixed veggies, Italy with their fish and pasta, South Korea with their fish soup and kimchi, and many more, there's less fried stuff, less potatoes, and more fresh, colorful options. We're not showing these photos to explain why American kids are more obese than kids of other countries. We're showing these photos to explain how our environment has a big role in becoming obese. If we want to tackle obesity, school cafeterias are a great way to start. There's also the theory where these unhealthy foods can cause mass addiction. We know that foods high in sugar trigger the same reward areas in the brain as addictive drugs. In an experiment on rats, researchers found that an overwhelming majority preferred sucrose over cocaine. These are the sugars that we find in everyday foods, such as sweetened cereals, cakes, and donuts. Fruits also contain sugar, but in small, appropriate amounts. However, most foods that label themselves as healthy actually contain more sugar than you think. 
100 grams of an apple contains 10 grams of sugar. 100 grams of your typical granola bar, 29 grams. 100 grams of your chocolate muffin, 42.9. Okay, so we still haven't got to you. You aren't obese, you don't have kids, so you could care less about the future generation. But the problem with obesity is it'll affect your taxes. Obesity is the largest driver of preventable healthcare costs in the world. As a person's BMI increases, so does the healthcare costs. Economists calculate that this takes up 16.5% of the US healthcare budget. This comes to $168 billion per year. This is bad news for companies too. It costs them $4.3 billion for days lost to obesity due to going to the hospital or calling in sick. Also, there's lower productivity. It costs them $506 per obese worker per year. There is a silver lining because these costs are preventable. A 2008 study found that investing $10 per person in community-based programs to increase exercise and improve nutrition could save the US more than $16 billion annually within five years. That's a return of $5.60 for every $1 invested. $16 billion saved per year is equivalent to around 355 new fully equipped high schools in the US annually. Obesity is the silent epidemic that our generation has neglected. It has led to many problems around the world and we need to solve it before it spirals out of control. The first step to solving the problem is understanding about it. In our next video, we'll be going through the state of obesity and whether or not obesity is a disease. We'll be going through the many reasons behind obesity and we'll tell you what our hormones, frozen Hawaiian pizza, and McDonald's have in common and how you can blame Richard Nixon for being obese. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time for more Dare to Know.